Alright, we're going to take a look at two review problems in this video. And for both of these, we're going to be disproving statements that are claimed to be true. Uh, first one, if a and b are non-negative integers with a divides b, then a must be less than or equal to b. Now that certainly looks reasonable. Um, if a is a factor of b, then we typically think that a is less than or equal to b. However, there's one important special case. Let a be equal to 2. That's the number for a is not so important. But b can be equal to 0. 0 is not negative. Then b is equal to a times an integer. There's my b. That's equal to a times an integer. So that 2 divides 0 by definition. So ordinarily, we don't think of 2 dividing 0, but 0 is even. Um, 0 is equal to 2 times an integer. Okay. However, 2 is not less than 0. 2 less than 0 is false. So there is my one counterexample. If I want to show that something is false, I don't have to list every possible counterexample. I just need to provide one counterexample. Now this can be salvaged if I change the word non-negative to positive, then the statement is true. Uh, but if I have non-negative here, then the statement is false because b could be equal to zero. Okay, now the uh, second one for this video is a, a little more subtle. Just prove the following. If p is prime, then two to the p minus one is also prime. Now the reason this one is subtle is because uh, we actually have to go quite a ways before we can find a counterexample. So let's start, uh, I've got my calculator here, let's just uh, try some numbers out and see what happens. So 2 squared minus 1, that's 3, that's prime, that doesn't work. So let's try 2 to another prime number, minus 1. 2 to the third minus 1 is 7, that's prime, so that didn't work. 2 to the 5 minus 1 is 31, that is prime, so that doesn't work. 2 to the 7 minus 1, now we're starting to get to some big numbers, 127. Now it turns out that 127 is prime. If I try dividing it by 3, doesn't work. 127, 127 divided by 5 is 25.4, doesn't work. 127 divided by 7, I get a decimal expansion, doesn't work. 127 divided by 11, doesn't work. And it turns out I can stop there. You can see that if I divide by 11, I get a quotient that's a little bit more than 11, so there's no point trying 13 out. So 127 is also prime. Well, let's go to the next one up. 2 to the 11th minus 1. 2 to a prime number minus 1. Now we're getting to some big numbers, 2047. And let's see if this is prime. Well, this is going to take a while. 2047 divided by 2. Well, 2 doesn't clearly doesn't work. Divide by 3 doesn't work. 2047 divided by 5 clearly does not work. 2000 divided by 7 doesn't work. Divide by 11 doesn't work. Divide by 13 doesn't work. Next prime number up is 17 doesn't work. Next one up is 19 doesn't work. And the next one up is 23. And lo and behold, that one goes in evenly. So it took a while to find a counterexample. And I do this work on the calculator because the next one I'm about to write is deceptively short. This is false. Let p be equal to 11. Then 11 is prime. But 2 to the 11th minus 1 which is 2047, which I just got done showing is equal to 23 times 89 is composite. And it actually took a little bit of effort to actually establish uh, that there is a prime number so that um, it, uh, the factorization does not work, or so that the number here, 2 to the p minus 1, uh, does have a non-trivial factorization.